Hello from the north coast of the Highlands. Uh, I'm Al from the Wildcroft and uh, this is the latest uh, Shepherd's Up tiny house that I thought I'd uh, give you a tour. It's just about to head off to its new home uh, in the Northern Isles of Shetland. So uh, yeah, I thought I'd give you a quick tour around before it heads off on its journeys. So I'll just give you a sort of walk around and show you all the features of it. A few differences this time. Um, we've got the curved roofing again, single storey and the, the stove pipe up there. We've gone for Scottish grown Douglas fir cladding this time. Really, really nice stuff to work with. Uh, sort of tongue, well, shiplap profile. Um, the double glazed windows all the way around it. Well, this one's actually a triple glazed window, but the other's a double glazed window. Um, yeah, the cladding's been really nice. It's uh, fairly durable D Douglas fir, so it doesn't need to be treated. Um, same as cedar and larch and things, but they, it will weather to a gray color if you don't treat it, um, but it will last really well without having to, to treat it all the time. So it's on a um, twin axle tiny house purpose-made trailer. So I buy these in, they actually come from the uh, Netherlands, I think. Um, it's got um, jacks on it this time, slightly different improvement they've made on the design. It's a really good four jacks all the way around for leveling it up, which is really handy. And slightly smaller wheels than the previous ones as well. Uh, so it sits a bit lower to the ground, which is nice. Uh, down on this side, we've got more windows. A uh, little window over there is in the bathroom. And we've gone for the dark grey Wrigley tin curved roofing this time. So we'll go around and head on inside. Under here is where we've got all the fittings to, that's the water coming in. Usually it wouldn't be a hose pipe, you'd actually do it permanently on a on a 20 mil blue water feed and you wouldn't have an extension <laughs> like that. But this is my temporary setup just to get it all tested. Uh, but the power goes in there and the gas connects all this end as well. So I've added on a small deck this time. This is just uh, two feet wide, it's a couple of 60 centimeters wide, and it folds up out of the way um, and clips up there to, for when you're transporting it. So it's out of the way of your jockey wheel and stuff like that, which is here. Uh, if once it's sighted, you could add a bigger deck or some steps and things like that. And um, it's just a nice little addition to have a step up into the, into the house. A double glazed stable door on the front. This is all in ebony wood stain. So we've gone for a hardwood stable door this time and I'll head on inside. So inside we've got the curved roof which um, the beams on that are actually laminated from Douglas fir strips as well and then that's all painted with a nice matte white, eggshell white uh, to reflect the light, keep it nice and light and airy. And then we've got the bed end down there with the nice curves away that I've been doing before. All framed in Douglas fir. All the kind of pinky timber you can see is Douglas fir. Um, and the white, the lighter colour is pine cladding. The floor is Douglas fir as well. Tongue and groove floor. This is all them um, Scottish grown timber. Apart from the pine cladding. All the other stuff is Scottish grown, which is great to be able to use that. And then we've got an oak uh, worktop there. Um, so as we come in... And I'll show you the kitchen first, we'll start in this corner. So we've got a uh, room sealed uh, boiler this time, which is a handy little thing because it doesn't have to have um, a vent into the room so much, so that's good. Uh, these have come onto the market recently and are much better than the standard caravan ones that were popular. Uh, I've got a nice big stainless steel sink and some rustic bib taps there, sort of brass taps. A double burner hob, which is gas with a pizza ignition as well, to plug in, and a little fridge with a little freezer box as well and a cutlery drawer above that. In the corner we've got the uh, little shelf and all the pipe work and stuff and down here we've got the um, fuse box so it's all RCD protected and everything. We've got a vent down there uh, to vent any gas should there be a leak and that's the stopcock for the water and a little fire extinguisher so it's nice and tidy. If you wanted you could put a, a little cupboard door on there or maybe hang a a curtain or something just to cordon it off make it look a bit yeah to, to shelve it all off and there's plenty of space as well for adding shelves and things I've left that for the client to do probably gonna have some hanging drainers up here uh, above the sink but again she's gonna install that herself uh, we've got a um, windy smithy uh, wood burning stove again with an oven this is one I've used a few times now really popular twin wall flue going out the roof for safety and a galvanized metal splash back. We've used the galvanized plain metal all the way um, this time. Previously I've painted these 
Um, but we've decided to kind of leave it as that rustic look. I actually really like it. It looks really cool. Um, it makes the place look a bit more funky, so that's cool. Uh, so this is a stove. So this is made by a blacksmith down the south. I mean, we've got Windy Smithy. Really, really nice stove. Very popular. Uh, I've had it on just recently, actually. It's still warm. Um, good size firebox there. You get good size logs in there. And then the oven, we've got little thermometers on the oven. Um, great for baking and stuff. Uh, you don't need it on that much actually in here because it's such a well insulated space. And um, on that note, actually, the insulation is all sheep's wool insulation. So we've got loads in the roof, uh, walls, and floor. I try and do everything plastic free. So the only plastic in here is a is a membrane and uh, a bit of plumbing pipe from outside where it has to be plastic. The rest is all metal, all copper pipe and and wood and things. So it's um, one of the key things I want to do is avoid plastic in the build. So we've got a big um, triple glazed window looking out to a, which would be the view on site. So um, with, a, with vents at the top, so that's not an opening window, should have fixed one. And then across from that is a space between this shelf, desk shelf thing and the, the bathroom, which is big enough for a three seater sofa, which the client has already ordered. So that was measured to fit and ordered right at the start of the project. So it's 1.8 meters. It's actually a sofa bed as well. So there's a bit of space to, for someone to sleep in. So on the bed end here, this lights a separate um, separate light in the bed end that's controlled in the bed area. Uh, and we've got nice curved wood going up there and a big beam going across. It's a queen size bed this time, so a small double, um, just to make the space a bit bigger inside. So this shepherd's at six meters long in total. Um, so the, the, we decided to go for a, for a small double bed, which is what I did in the first cut as well, actually. Loads of storage at the back there and a double socket. And then um, if I come right round, you can see you've got the, oh, can you see it? Where is it? <laughs> you've got the dimmer switch there for the, for the light as well. Um, so loads of space and an opening window, of course, to, so you can keep that because that will get quite warm when you've got the stove on, obviously the heat rises and stuff. So you want that window open probably when you're sleeping. And then underneath, we've got a big cupboard on this side. That goes right back, so it's 1.2 metres back. There's actually some space right around the back as well. Loads of storage for boxes and things. And then two huge drawers either side. They are, uh, I think, a metre long. Um, they'll take about 30 or 40 kilos in them as well. Heavy duty runners on them, so you get loads of stuff in there. And that clicks away there. And then under here, these all slide out on runners on the floor, which makes sure they slide out straight and easy to put back in again and stuff. And, and they're on felt so they don't scratch the floor. And um, so this is the steps to go up into the bed. Uh, and of course, not to waste anything, any opportunity. Under these plywood pieces, we've got loads and loads of storage and all this. So they just push back in there. Above that, we've got a table. So that slides right out. It's 1.2 meters long. Uh, and the slight difference I've made this time, um, the table actually comes all the way out. Before they just had two, two legs and stopped. But uh, now you can take it all the way out and move it around into the room as you wanted. So I thought that was a nice little improvement to my previous one. And then if you click it back on there, it slides back under on runners again. So they're really nice and easy to do. Uh, these two boxes here, again, come right out so you can move them around. Uh, there's one on that side as well. There are your seats for your table. Um, or they can be, well, you can use them for whatever really, you could use them for, for seat, general seating. But they're also big, big storage boxes, plywood tops on there. So, uh, and the same, they're on little runners, so they slide in, slide back in. Uh, what else have we got to show you? Little double socket there, loads of storage underneath for some boxes, your kindling and newspapers and stuff like that for lighting the stove. Um, little window sills there, and then we've got the bathroom here. We'll show you the stable door actually. Let's shut the stable door, that's quite nice. Lock that one, open that one. Here we go. So, um, part of the reason for a stable door is because of when you're cooking. To be able to vent the space so we've got the opening window directly opposite the cooker and you've got the stable door there so it's nice and easy to, to vent while you're cooking which is really really important especially in a timber small uh, relatively small place like this to keep it well vented so up above there we've got the, the carbon monoxide alarm and smoke detector 
and in here we have a little shower room so previously I've used I've done baths which is what the client has wanted but this time we've got a shower we've gone for the rustic galvanized panelling again uh, a little cut bit of copper pipe there is a shower rail and a rustic uh, shower uh, brass shower rose up there fed off a tap so very very rustic and funky there's only a single single feed for this it's not a mixer shower so basically what you do is you set the heat set the temperature on the boiler uh, and then that's the temperature your shower is so you can adjust it there um, but basically once it's set you can leave it we've got a big or nice um, opening window in there as well plenty of natural light uh, and to vent it while you're showering and then well i've got some shelves up above here as well a nice light there and then in here we've got the compost loo which is built to fit the space so i custom make these um it's got a urine separating urine diverter on it so there'll be a bucket in the back there and then that i haven't put the bucket in just yet but that pipe is for the urine which goes into the waste and everything else and it's got a um a, a trap type thing on it to stop any smells coming back up as well and we've got a vent vent pipe in that corner as well just to vent any smells away so simple but really effective really easy to use easy to maintain so um that's the bathroom nice lightweight door in there that's the light switch for the bathroom and i think i've been around a bit <laughs> it's always nice to show people these and uh, i enjoy sharing what i do and the techniques i use as well while i'm building it um always happy to answer comments and, and feedback and things like that as well have a look at our website the wild croft if you want to see um the other ones that i've built and uh, yeah, get in touch if you've got any questions or comments, that'd be appreciated. And thank you for watching.